Continuing on with my 12 part rookie profile series for 2022, we are moving to my fourth ranked rookie in this class, my 1.04 and one quarterback leagues, and probably my 105 to 106 in super flex leagues, who is also my wide receiver too, this time Traylon Burks, wide receiver from Arkansas, the consensus wide receiver one in this class, and there are not a lot of things Burks can't do. And to be honest, he's not far behind my wide receiver one, Drake London. There are just a few small, almost like tiebreaker kind of things that do make me rank London 1 and Burks 2, but we'll get into all that here very soon. So first, looking at Traylon Burks' college career, he came into Arkansas as a bit of an older player as he was already 19 and a half years old in his freshman season right out of high school. In 11 games played in 2019, he caught 29 passes for 475 yards and no touchdowns. He was third on the team in receptions, but first in receiving yards, so he's already showcasing that explosive play capability. Overall, Arkansas as a team was just terrible. I mean, they went 2-10 and 10 overall. They were 0-8 in the SEC. They actually had five different players with at least 25 pass attempts on the season. The entire situation was just really, really bad. So let's just move into 2020 in Burks' sophomore year. And in nine games played that year, Burks was essentially 40% of their offense hauling in 51 receptions for 820 yards and seven touchdowns. This was his breakout season as a sophomore that you would love to see from your wide receiver prospects. And then he then followed that up with a tremendous 2021 season where he was somehow even a bigger part of their team, catching 66 receptions for 1,104 yards and 11 touchdowns. Then he also added 112 yards and a score on 14 rush attempts, which is an area of his game that has led to a lot of comparisons to Debo Samuel. He had five games with 120 receiving yards or more, and also an additional game with 140 total yards when you include in rushing. And then he essentially capped off his 2021 season with eight for 179 and two against Alabama. He is rightfully deserving of a first round pick in the NFL draft. And as I mentioned before, he is the consensus wide receiver one in this draft class. But moving into the analytics, I want to show you why he is not my wide receiver one and what separates him from Drake London in my rankings. So as a reminder, I have a marker system of 12 baselines that I would like to see my wide receivers hit, which is a variety of check boxes from athletic profile, production, and then finally draft capital. If you'd like a more in-depth look at how those markers work for wide receivers, I invite you to go check out my previous video on Drake London who I will remind you should come in as a 12 out of 12 marker prospect, just to have that in the back of your mind here. So looking at Burks' profile using my markers, he is currently sitting at eight out of 12 markers hit. And assuming that he gets drafted in the first or second round, he will end up as a nine out of 12 marker player, which I'm also estimating to be second or third in this class at the end of the day, depending on some other draft capital for some other wide receivers. He hits on everything athletically as he is six foot two, 225 pounds. He ran a four, five, five at the combine, which gives him a 105 speed score. He also hits on a few production markers, including best season of market share of yards, best and last yards per team pass attempt, and a 20 year old 30% breakout age from his 2020 season. Then, like I said, Burks is going to be a first round pick in the NFL draft. So all of that come together means that he is a nine out of 12 marker kind of wide receiver. The only three markers that he is missing on are age, 20% breakout age, and first yards per team pass attempt. So let's get the easiest one out of the way first. I'm looking for 1.5 yards per team pass attempt in a player's first freshman season. Burks was at 1.2, which is very, very close. And if he actually caught another 140 yards, he would have hit that marker as well. Granted, 140 yards that year would have been an additional 25% boost on top of his receiving yardage that year. But he is very close, just not quite there for that one marker. The other two, age and breakout age, are related and both have to do with the fact that, like I said, he is an older prospect despite being an early declare still. He was 19 and a half years old in his freshman season. He turns 22 on March 23rd. Happy early birthday, Traylon. So he is over a year older than Drake London, who still can't legally drink until late July this year. Of course, though, if you take age out of it, there is the parallel that both Burks and London broke out in 2020, which is the same season. Both of them as sophomores, both of them two years removed from high school. So I definitely can see if you're not a person who values age as much, that that wouldn't really matter to you. And I can also understand that if you say, well, Burks played in the SEC and Drake London played in the Pac-12, so there's different competition levels, I get that too. But to me, Drake London just checks more boxes and comes in with a much higher floor, even though Burks, in my opinion, has a slightly higher ceiling. So I will say 
that these two are in the top of their own at the top of the wide receivers in this class. I mean, we'll cover a handful more wide receivers later on in the rest of this series, but none of them are up where London and Burks are to me, and I think they're sitting there at the top of this tier all by themselves. The last thing I will say about London and Burks is consensus dynasty value is heavily on the Burks side right now, meaning my wide receiver one is getting discounted in price in rookie drafts. You're most likely not getting Burks at the 1.05 in rookie drafts, but you might get London. And if you agree with me that the two of them are extremely close in rankings, you'll take that discount with me all draft season long. Looking at Burks historically, his immediate comp list filtered down to just first round draft pick players. It gives you what I think is the most complete range of outcomes from floor to ceiling basically I've ever seen because it goes from Des Bryant and Demarius Thomas, who are both massive hits, to Dwayne Bowe, who was also a very good hit. Michael Crabtree, also a good hit, but more intermediate. Then it goes all the way down to Nikhil Harry and Laquan Treadwell, two of the biggest busts in recent history. So like I said, if that's not a full spectrum range of outcomes, I don't know what is. Then if you extend out the filter just a little bit to include second round players, you get AJ Brown, who is probably the closest comparison to Traylon Burks when you remove draft capital. Then you also get Allen Robinson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Alshon Jeffrey, Cortland Sutton, Jordy Nelson, and also LaVisca Chanel. Overall, that is a very strong list with some overlapping players with Drake London's comparisons as well, which I think just goes to show you why these two guys are the wide receiver one and wide receiver two in this class. And as with London, there are a lot of teams that could use the talents of Traylon Burks in the first round, specifically when you look at that mid first range. I think the most obvious spot now for any rookie wide receiver is Green Bay at either 22 or 28 overall, assuming that Burks even makes it that far. But let's just play the game and just assume that he makes it down to 22, gets drafted by the Green Bay Packers, because as of recording this, they haven't signed anyone in free agency to come in and even try to replace Devontae Adams on that depth chart. And honestly, we might even be at the point where even like the biggest names right now especially after Juju Smith-Schuster signed is like OBJ, Jarvis Landry. All of those guys are wide receiver twos to where Burks could come in and just immediately be the wide receiver one for Aaron Rodgers on the Green Bay Packers. That is the one landing spot right now where I think he would be the 1.01 in every draft, no matter what, no matter where Brees Halls goes, no matter where Malik Hillis gets drafted or how high. If Burks is a Green Bay Packer, he is the 1.01 for sure. But we will just say, fingers crossed, that that is Drake London, though, as my wide receiver one. Next up on the list for me is a tie between Atlanta, who I think I've highlighted in, like, every single rookie video now as a potential landing spot, and the Houston Texans, who now sit at 13 overall because of that Deshaun Watson trade from the Cleveland Browns. So both of these teams are basically in the same situation where the teams suck, the quarterbacks are eh, but there is a ton of opportunity for targets. And if you give Burks 120 targets at least as a rookie, good things should happen. And in fact, since 2000, 17 rookie wide receivers have gotten at least 120 targets, and only one of them have finished outside the top 30 in fantasy in that season. So yeah, if nothing else, there should be volume on either the Houston Texans or the Atlanta Falcons for Traylon Burks to produce from. After that, I think the next most plausible team to draft Burks would be the Philadelphia Eagles with any of their three picks at 15, 16, or 19. We know their track record with selecting receivers hasn't been great, but they did well last year, in my opinion, with Devontae Smith, and they can do it again this year with Traylon Burks. And while I don't love it for fantasy, you can't deny that the opportunity for 100 plus targets isn't there. It may not be the best landing spot for him in terms of maximizing his ceiling, because he'll be sharing it with Devontae Smith in already a low volume offense from Jalen Hurts. So we could get some weird like Terry McLaurin kind of situation where we're just waiting for him to do more than what he's already done because of kind of quarterback play. But even with his draft capital being on the Philadelphia Eagles, potentially being better than Devontae Smith or at least on the same platform. And if they were to upgrade at quarterback at any point from Jalen Hurts, he is still very much worth a high first round rookie pick. Then there's a multitude of other teams that he could go to either a little bit before or a little bit after the teen range of the NFL draft. I've seen a lot of people think that he's going to the New York Jets to pair with Elijah Moore. Not really sure how I feel about that one. Or if he survives into the 20s by some chance, then the New England Patriots actually pick right before the Packers at 21. Then the Cardinals and the Cowboys pick right after the Packers at 23 and 24. After that, I don't really think there's any shot that he's still on the board. So teams like Buffalo, Miami, Detroit, all these teams with later first round picks, 
need to trade up then in order to go get him. So that is my breakdown of my 1.04 Traylon Burks. Make sure you hit that like button to let me know how much you love Traylon Burks. Let me know down in the comments if he is your wide receiver one in this class and you want to argue or debate with me over him versus Drake London. And then be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed to this channel to get more content from the DLF YouTube channel as we continue on through rookie draft season. And with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.